I see a lot of people going to the thrift stores and finding some crazy items. So I checked out this thrift store to see what I could find. You got your pretty basic shoe selection. I found these Dub Zeros from 2005 on the rack. And for some reason you always see a pair of feelers at a thrift store. I saw that they had pallets outside that they haven't put on the rack yet so I wanted to see what's inside. I didn't see anything but toys, bags, and some clothing. So everything here isn't is in process, right? It's not processed yet. Okay. If I find something here, can I just copy it off of you? Yeah. That's cool? Yeah. Alright, for sure. Yo, what the hell? Oh hell no, for real? Bro, that's crazy. These Nikes look really old, man. I got a dub for you right here, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah. Yo, I can't believe I got this for 20 bucks. That's crazy. Let's bring them back to life. Yo, that's crazy. I got this pair for $20 when a brand new pair would cost between $3,000 to $4,000. Would you buy these for $4,000 brand new and just let it sit and crumble away like this pair? I just want to know what the most we'll sell them for after we fix them up. Now my first step is to remove all of the crumbled midsole from the upper and on the rubber midsole. Leaving the hair dryer inside of the shoes makes it easier for me to remove the midsole that is stuck on the strobel board. I'm gonna use a blow dryer to help soften the glue on the soles. Then I'm gonna remove the excess midsole with acetone and con balls. The midsole donors that I'm using are not a perfect fit. There's too much excess material in the heel that's why the heel cup is not fitting flush. And there's also excess material on the toe area which I'm gonna need to cut off. The reason why it's not fitting perfectly is because I'm using a midsole from a replica shoe. Finding an authentic replacement sole for the Air Yeezy ones are hard to come by now, especially since most of them retroed in 2013, and they're already showing signs of crumbling. Do you think it's a good idea to use a replica sole as a donor? For me personally, I don't see why not, especially since that the quality of the replicas have gotten a lot better, and most people online are saying that it's made from the same factory as authentic pairs, uh, which I don't know about that. We shaved the foam down a good amount, and the heel is fitting a whole lot better. I'm going to do a light icing session on the soles, just to remove some stains and yellowing off of the rubber. I'm also going to remove this excess pan leather that got stuck on the midsole. To remove the crumbled midsole that's stuck on the uppers, I'm going to use a heat gun and scrape off as much as I can before I hit it with acetone and cotton balls. My next step is to glue the midsole to the rubber sole now. And I'm gonna apply a thin layer of Bart Cement Infinity on both sides. And quick shout out to Fresh for putting me on game on Bart Cement Infinity again. You should peep him on Instagram and check out his latest post. He made a one of one sample for Cooper Cup, co signed by both Nike and Union LA. But yeah, Bart Cement Infinity is fire, but I do occasionally still use Bart Cement Super Stick from time to time. So I did make a few mistakes here trying to bond the midsole to the rubber sole. I was too focused on seeing if my hands were centered on camera. And I really wasn't paying attention to how I was bonding the soles. Once you start bonding the glue after you heated it up, it's gonna stick to anything the first thing it comes in contact with. 
So the midsole got bonded in areas I didn't want it to bond and it was off center. So I'm using my heat gun to separate the two soles and I'm just opening it in up opening and I'm just opening it enough just to give me some leeway to fix my mistake. I think this is a sign for me to hire a cameraman so I can just solely focus on working on shoes. So when you drop position is open and I'll give you good pay, you'll get a pack of cigarettes and a foot rub. I think that's more than fair, honestly. Oh, I forgot to show a before and after on the soles, so here they are. So for this next part, I'm going to see what I need to shave off on the midsole. So the glue line on the upper will line up perfectly on the midsole and the rubber toe cap. And you can still see some dark spots on the original glue line on the white print. That just means I need to shave off a little bit of the foam on the toe area just so our toe cap can look flush. I'm going to use this pen that disappears with heat to line up the midsole to the upper just so I know exactly where to put my adhesive. Before we apply adhesive on the midsoles, I'm going to prep both surfaces with acetone and cotton balls. Now once I apply my adhesive, I'm going to let it cure for 8 minutes. Then I'm going to reactivate the glue with heat and then bond them together. Now that the heel has been fully glued down, I'm going to focus on the toe cap. Damn, I got some butter fingers today. What's going on? Now, the same concept on the heel, I'm going to apply on the toe cap area. Alright, let's run it back just in case if you have a short attention span because of TikTok. So we're going to apply a thin coat of glue on both sides, let it cure for 8 minutes. We'll reactivate the glue with heat using a blow dryer and then bond them together. I actually like using these paint brushes as my glue brushes. So in order to have them last longer, I take off excess glue with a cotton ball soaked in acetone. So the original paint on the midsole was fine, but I accidentally made it dirty, so I stripped the whole midsole, prepped it for a repaint, and right now I'm just repainting it in my new booth. I had an airbrushing booth, but the problem was there was still a big open space where dust can still enter, so I still had dust issues when it came to repainting midsoles. So this enclosed space helped me solve that issue. If you guys want to cop this, I'll have a link in my description, and just scroll down to where it says Amazon products that I use. Now before I apply a matte varnish, I'm going to brush up the midsoles. To remove any dust that might be sticking to the midsoles, the last thing I want is for dust to be sealed in with a clear coat. Thank you. 
For the next few steps, I'm going to repaint the upper leather with my pre-mixed paint. But first, I'm going to clean off the leather with acetone and cotton balls. I've already painted one shoe and here's what it looks like. The left shoe has more of a blue tint, just like the pant leather. One tip I have for you is to apply very thin coats. It might be easier to blob on paint on a leather, but you still want to see the pores of the leather. And putting too much paint will hide those pores, making it look unnatural and uneven. These shoes have seen too much sunlight so it faded the paint on the quarter panel. The only part where it didn't fade was the leather behind the strap. And I'm going to enhance the photo so you can see it better. So my last step is to replace the yellowed velcro, also because the glue is so brittle it just peels right off. So I'm going to replace it with brand new velcro and new adhesive. And this video is brought to you by Wingstop. Now nah, I'm playing. Have you tried that new chicken sandwich yet? I personally wouldn't recommend getting lemon pepper in a sandwich because that will leave your mouth dry as hell. But if we had original hot or Cajun then yeah we're talking. Now that we got the Velcros cut up, we're gonna glue it on the shoes now. The only difference is I'm pinching with my fingers like I'm making a dumpling. And that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe and I'll send you good vibes. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at johnandrew00 so you could peep the behind the scenes. Also, if you guys want your shoes restored, I have a link in the description that will give you a portal to my email. Alright guys, I appreciate you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. So this just happened. I put them on eBay for sale. Oh, and also, can we get the music back, please? So I put them on eBay just to put it out there. It's kind of sort of a troll post on eBay from the description. I mean, I'm sure Kanye did touch these shoes as part of quality control back in 09. And I wanted to put a price that I know no one will 
be willing to buy these shoes, but will at least give me an offer that I'll be comfortable with. Cause even if you list an item for a good price, people will still lowball you on eBay. So you gotta trick these lowballers. I posted it and I just left it alone. And then I got this email. I'm like, what? I'm in. Enjoy your new pair of shoes, person from Dubai. 